Hey everybody, welcome to episode 56 of the Fiberista Files. Today is Wednesday, November 16th. Okay, um, it's been about a week since I've last podcasted. Lots has happened and nothing has happened all at the same time. Uh, this past week for me was nice in that I got to go home to the mountains this weekend. Um, with the Veterans Day holiday, I had three days, so I got to spend a day at home in the house, just me and the pets and the dog and the cats, and I cleaned. I mean, I cleaned, like I was washing walls down and curtains and all that, just because I had a chance. I had time. It was really nice. Um, got to watch some football on Sunday. It was very lovely. Came back here Sunday night, got back a little bit late. And then Monday and yesterday worked 24 hours in two days. Uh, I was parent-teacher conferences at school, so I, I get to school a little bit past 7 and stay in the morning and stay until a little past 7 at night. I was, I was going to say chocolate block full, but maybe that's a weird expression to use. Um, I was book solid both nights. Uh, in fact, I had parents, like, jumping over each other to get into my room first. I had lines outside my door. Like, parents wanted to talk about their kids, which is wonderful. And I love to see that parents care about their kids. But it was exhausting. Four hours of solid talking to parents after I'd taught all day, I was pooped. I was absolutely pooped. Um, Monday, I had a, Monday night, I had a really hard time decompressing. I didn't get to bed and to sleep until almost midnight. And then it was even more tired on Tuesday. And everyone's like, you look really tired. Are you tired? All of my kids, this kid, are you tired? Like they make that face and ask me that every time. Yes, I'm tired. Thank you for noticing that I have giant puffy eyes and my eyeballs are a little squinty, like nothings. Thank you for noticing I look like crap. I appreciate that. I do. Um, so that was Tuesday, and then Tuesday night, I came home, I did the shred, I checked my messages on Plurk, and I went to bed. I was tired. And then I slept a little late this morning, so I actually got almost nine hours of sleep last night, so I feel much better. Um, I did have class today, and I'll have class tomorrow, but it almost seems easy compared to having to stay until dark every night and talking to all these parents and just being on all the time. So, um, because of that, and all that has been accomplished at school, I haven't done a whole lot of knitting. But, this weekend while I was home on, f I th think it was Saturday, I finished an object. <gasps> Are you excited? I'm so excited. Um, this has not yet been blocked. I need to block it tonight because it's going to dry because it's going to go with me this weekend. But I don't think it will take long to dry on the sweater dryer. This is the, oh! What's that little piece? Get out of there. This is the Sock Yarn Baby Sweater by Hannah Fettig uh, out of Knitbot. And it is a very simple sweater, raglan style, top down, has a garter ridge collar, cuff, and hem. Very simple, very plain, totally reversible. It's the same on the front and on the back. So for new parents, it doesn't matter you know, which way they get the squirming kit in there. Um, it is very stretchy. See that? Um, so even if the kid has a, a huge head, they'll still be able to get that over him. Um, and the sleeves as well. And if the sleeves, they look a little short to me, but I don't know how long a newborn's arms even are. And they're always like pulled in, aren't they? So maybe it'll be fine. And they can always roll the cuff up. And um, I don't really care it's done. <laughs> It doesn't have to fit. I just, it's the thought that counts and the thought has been completed. Um, the hem is a little bit flippy up. It's a little lettuce -y. I'm not really sure what that's all about. I'm hoping it's going to block out. Um, I'm not pleased with that one aspect, but the rest of it looks great. Uh, and this is knit out of Highland Handmade Silver Maple Sock in an unnamed colorway. It was just a test colorway. It's just a lot of blues, variegated, sort of a tonal effect really. Uh, knit on US 4 needles. I can probably get the conversion for you if you give me just one second. The US 4 is a... three point five millimeter? Maybe? three point five millimeter? Does that sound right? Needle. Um, it's a nice pattern. 
I don't think I would knit it again unless I added something to it, whether it's a cable detail or um, lace for a girl baby maybe or baby maybe <laughs> or some fair isle or something just because this is like a blank canvas. I mean, there's so much you could do here, stripes or color work or, um, it was super easy. So it would be totally easy to put in some, some detailing on that. So I'm going to sort of liven it up again. So if I knit this sweater again, it will be, I will use the pattern as a template and I will make design changes from there. So I have an FO, FO. I just want you to look at it because it's pretty. Okay. Um, my wish shawl is not done. I was hoping to have that done by Friday. Not going to happen. Nope. Not even close. That's a bummer, but it, it was a self-imposed deadline. It was just for me. I wanted to wear it to my friend Caitlin's Make-A-Wish party. Um, it wasn't. It's not a gift for anybody, so I'm the only one that loses out there. The Argyle Baby Socks... Um, I've not done Argyle before, and I was looking through the patterns on Ravelry that had Argyle and noticed that it's Intarja. I'm not doing Intarja socks that are miniature on a deadline for the first time ever. That was dumb. I don't know why I thought I could do that. So um, I've crossed out the baby socks from the deadline knits list, and I'm instead, I've cast on the Sarge Tees baby booty. Um, this is going to get ripped out because I messed up the increases, but it really is like four rows. So who cares? Um, this is knit out of sugar maple sock yarn in an unnamed colorway, just some greens. Uh, and it's going to have a yellow top. This yarn is from Knitter's Brewing Company. It's just some yellow. So it's going to be some yellow and green socks. Uh, knit on US Force 3.5 millimeter needles. Sarge T's booties take no time at all, and they're frigging adorable. Let me get you the picture of the pattern here. This is what the booties look like. How cute are they? These booties are not for my brother and sister-in-law. Come on, focus. There we go. The yellow's going to be on the top. The green's going to be on the bottom. They are actually... Um, the baby booties are going to be for my principal. His wife is going to have a baby right around the same time that my sister-in-law has a baby. So, I'm doing a simple pair of booties. That took me about 10 minutes. Uh, I'm going to work on those tonight. I'm going to hopefully bang out the first booty tonight. The only problem with the booty pattern is that you have to seam the booties. They're not in the round. I've done them before, and they were it was easy peasy. I just have to remember how I seamed those together. If I did it before, I can do it again. So... Here's hoping. Um, I have another three day weekend this weekend, so I'm going to take the baby booties with me. I'm going to take the My Wish shawl with me. And I think I'm going to take my Wendy Knits lace book and some intention yarns that I have. And maybe it's not intention yarns. I don't remember what I'm going to use to knit with that. But, anyways, I want to start the Poor Poets Mints uh, for the SSK knit along. SSKKAL. Cow. <laughs> uh, anyway, so once the poor poets mints are done, which I hope to be done before Thanksgiving break, I, I'm totally, it says by November 30th. They might be done by November 30th. Um, that would give me two weeks to make three projects. That's not going to happen. This list is totally unrealistic. The more I look at it, the more I'm like, yeah, it's not going to happen. But I want to get the Cthulhu mittens done by December 15th so that I can send those out. I need to get knitting. Oof, we'll see. Um, life's busy. I'm doing the best I can. They're just gonna have to understand. I don't know why I I why I say I'm gonna do all this stuff. Stupid. Spinning. I've not done any spinning. I'm told my I my want to spin. I really do. But I told myself I'm not going to spin that Navajo churro until I get the South Down last blog post typed up. It's seven o'clock. I don't know when that's gonna happen. I was gonna say tonight, but probably not tonight. Maybe this weekend, maybe Friday. Friday I'm off, so 
I'll be home in the mountains. So if I remember to bring my pictures, hopefully. Maybe I'll put the pictures in tonight and then save it as a draft. And then I can just type it up at home. So maybe that's what I'll do. Once that's done, the Navajo chair is going to go like lightning. Um, I also am going to, I dyed up a braid of the roses in high definition. And I'm going to be spinning that up for a friend of mine for Christmas. So I have a little bit of spinning planned, but I'm just sort of, again, trying to find the time to do that. Where did all of my time go? I used to have time, didn't I? In theory, I have the same number of hours that I did before, but for some reason it seems like since I moved down here, I've got nothing for time. There should be loads more. There's not. All right, so I have no show notes this week, by the way, so this, I'm sorry if this is a little random. Dye pots. I have been in the dye pots a little bit. Um, I am almost out of stuff, so I'm waiting on a dye order, uh, a fiber order. My fiber suppliers' prices have gone up again. This is the fourth or fifth time they've gone up since I've started dyeing. I'm frustrated. I understand. I do understand that they're just passing the price increases along because it's more for them. But I'm going to have to reformulate some of my prices again because I can't continually take the hit on the profit. I take as many hits as I can before I increase prices for you guys because I know it's frustrating for you too. But I, this is a business. I got to make money. So uh, I snuck in an order. The prices went up on the 14th, and I got an order in, I think, on the 12th. Like, I squeaked by. I put, I put in a pretty big order, and I'm just waiting to get it now. But because everybody was ordering at the same time because they all wanted to avoid the price increase, the shipping got delayed. So I'm not actually supposed to get it until the 21st, which is a Monday. So I won't even be dying until after that. So that sucks. But what I was dying... I just woke up one day and I said, you know what? I feel like dyeing progressives. Now, I don't normally want to dye progressives because they are much more labor intensive. Uh, they, they take about twice as long to dye as regular fiber. But that was where my interest lies. So lay, lay, that's where my interest was laying. So I, I went for it. So here's what I have. I did do a custom order um, of a skein of Survivor which is the breast cancer colorway. It's just a blend of light and hot pinks. Um, I have one for her, and this is one that I'm going to put up in the shop. Uh, this is done in the silver maple sock base. It was the only sock yarn I had left. Um, the silver maple sock is 60% superwash merino, 30% bamboo, and 10% nylon. So soft. This would be the most delightfully soft chemo cap, like a shadir or... Um, some other lined cap that you could possibly imagine. It, it would be so wonderful against your skin. Like, I just want to pet this yarn all the time. So that's that. Um, the three, I have three colorways of the progressive dyes. They are of the progressive colorways. They're all in the same composition as the sock yarn. 60% superwash merino, 30% bamboo, 10% nylon. The first one, and I have three of each of these. The first one is fire starter. Excuse me. I don't know what it is with the awning while I'm recording lately. Anyway, it starts out in the yellow, goes down from the yellow to the orange, goes to a brick orange, and then into a, a red, scarlet red. It's not really a scarlet red, it's more of an orange red, but so that's the fire starter. And yes, it's it does repeat, it does go back and I know a lot of progressives you'll see just starts with one color and goes to the end and doesn't go back. Um, you can always just break this in half and then spin spin from one end, spin from the same end. It's up to you how you want to spin it. So that's fire starter. The next one is a little bit similar um, but but different. This is throne room. Now last time I showed you throne room I told you that I wanted to I had meant to spin it as a progressive, but I messed up and I started putting the dye on the fiber before I remembered to arrange the fiber in a progressive way. So I was kind of like, crap. So the last one was just variegated, but this one is progressive. It starts with the grapey purple. And the way the grape purple takes the dye, there's these areas where there's blue. Um, the blue just absorbs differently. So it's, it's a purple with a little bit of blue. 
a cherry pink fuchsia, dark orangey red, bright fluorescent orange, and yellow. So this is the progression on that one. Gorgeous. I love this colorway. Love it. That's the throne room. So Firestarter Throne Room. And this one is Just Before Dawn, which is the colorway you've seen before. Uh, this time I did it up as a progressive instead of a straight variegated. Starts with black. And the bamboo doesn't take the dye, so you'll see that there's not a solid wall of color. It's supposed to be like that because the bamboo doesn't take it. It goes from black into navy blue, royal blue, medium blue, and an aqua blue. So this is just before dawn. The navy blue is not showing up on the screen very well, but it is a true navy. It's beautiful. And there are some undyed areas a little bit. So those are those three colorways. Now I also dyed up some silk. I love the finished look of silk. Silk is a butt ton of work. Um, Silk is divided into two ounce braids instead of four ounce braids, so it's more dividing. Silk fibers are incredibly delicate and soft and lightweight, and so they fly in the air. So the moment I start working with silk, it's in my eyes, and it's you can't rub your eyes because you've got silk all over your hands, it's all over your clothes and your face, and there's no way to like, like you can't even wipe your nose on your sweatshirt because this is all silk too. So. I actually use swimming goggles if I'm going to be dealing with a lot of silk because it just gets everywhere. When you soak it, it doesn't like to it doesn't like to take the water in, like it will sit on top of the water and never get wet. So you got to push it down and then you got to squeeze the bubbles out of it without felting it. So you got to kind of keep your hands in there. It's very labor intensive stuff to deal with. Don't get me wrong, I think it's beautiful, but what a pain in the butt. Um, once the yarn soaked and you dye it and heat set it and then rinse it, you've got to be very careful when you pull the silk out of the water because when the fibers are in the water, they're very loose and they will split right apart. So the braids break, which is frustrating. Very frustrating. But there's not a lot you can do about it, so you just got to be careful and go slow and that's it. However, the finished yarn looks beautiful. The silk is not dyed in progressives. The silk is straight variegated. Okay? Making it clear to you. Because they're the same colorways, they're just different style of dye. So the first one is just before dawn. There's glare. I know there's glare, I'm sorry. It's you'll see that there are more areas here where the dye didn't take in. Uh, if you're not if you don't soak it, the silk basically overnight, there's areas where the dye doesn't take. So navy blue, aqua blue, black, medium blue. It's it's lovely. And the differences in the colors will be muted a lot when you spin it up because as you spin it will it will become a much more subtle blend. Throne room, purples, pinks, oranges. The yellow really didn't didn't come out much. I don't know if it interacted with the orange and turned more orange or, or what, but there's really no yellow here. Pinks, purples, oranges. Again, the effect will be more subtle as you spin it. And the other one I didn't put in a bag because I want to show you. This is just a plain orange. I haven't named it yet. It's just oranges left over from Firestarter. It's a tonal orange. It goes from pumpkin. It does not look that bright. Oh, geez, that's better. It goes from pumpkin to coral to cream to regular orange to um, sort of a, an orange red. Really pretty. This silk is beautiful. It's very drapey. You know, it doesn't it doesn't have a lot of memory. It's not stiff. It's very drapey, wonderful. Here's the little tuft of silk here at the end. Isn't that lovely? It's just so pretty and soft. Silk is so beautiful. And sheen has beautiful shine to it. When silk dries, that same colorway, the same silk, the same everything, this is what it looks like. It looks like brains. No, seriously? Or intestine. Really. It looks like cat gut. <laughs> pretty. Not pretty. 
pretty, not pretty. Let's look at the silk tip again. Here's the tip, right? This nice fluffy little, you know, wishnik kind of tuft. This is what the tuft looks like when you haven't played with it. Really, which one do you want to play with? This fluffy one or this cat guy one? Okay, here's the thing. The silk compacts really tightly. I've talked about this before, I think. The silk compacts really tightly, and there's like booger, woolly boogers and stuff, and like it's just gross. Nobody wants to spin this. So once I've done all of the work of dyeing, drying, all that other stuff, I have to take this entire length of fiber, and you've got to snap it. Once you snap it, and the fibers realign a little bit, it becomes nice and fluffy. And the fibers slide past each other a lot. So there's the difference. I mean, that's, that's pretty case in point. Which would you rather spin? Um, this is a whole nother step in the dyeing process, in the, in the fiber prep process. It's worth it for the finished fiber, but it's, it's labor intensive. It's, it's worse than reskaining, I think, because the reskainer does a lot of the work for me. I have to do this by hand. There's no shortcut around it. So, you know, it's just, you take a couple of inches, you hold less than a staple length apart and you just snap. And of course that puts, like there's fibers in my eyes right now. I can feel them on my eyelashes because these little, little teeny fibers just go flying. You can't have any open containers of water nearby. Nope. And you can see how the color kind of becomes more subtle and stuff. So that's what I have to do. It's kind of a pain, but y'all are worth it. You are, you are definitely worth it. So I have two each of the throne room, two of the just before dawn and two of the plain orange, which was this one. There's no fire starter silk, but they're all, the oranges are from the fire starter oranges. So now the shop update is going to be Monday, November 21st. Usually it will be this, this coming Thursday, the 17th tomorrow, but tomorrow is the 6th anniversary of my first date with my husband. I am going to be in the mountains. Um, I'm going home this weekend and I'm not going to worry about the business. I love y'all dearly. The business is my passion in my life, but I'm going to pay attention to my husband. I love him. He's amazing. Um, and he deserves some attention. He's been, he's dealt with a lot <laughs> this past year. So I'm going home and I'm going on a date. So I won't be doing an update. Sorry. Um, this update, everything here again is a small update, but it will be Monday, November 21st at 5 PM Eastern standard time. I actually, that's a lie. It will be Monday night at 4 PM. Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to back it up an hour so that my international customers don't have to stay up so late. Um, I know that some of y'all wait up till 11, 12 o'clock at night to hit the update, and that's not fair to you. So it's going to be at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So hopefully it will be at a reasonable hour for you to hit the update if you if you want. Um, yeah, that's that's sounds reasonable. And I'll get all those mailed out on Tuesday before I head back north for the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, I don't know what y'all are doing for Thanksgiving. I am going to be home in the mountains with my husband and my dog and my cats. I am the older that I get, the more honest I am with myself about what I like holidays to be. And as crazy as my life is, as crazy as everything is these days, I just want to be home. I want to be surrounded by my things. I want to be in my comfortable clothes. I want to just be able to relax. For years, all through college, um, several years after I got out of college, I was always, you know, which family member in my house am I going to be at? Which holidays am I going home? 
for a long time, I was the only one of my parents' children who lived in the state. And so it was always, I was the, you know, child chosen to go home for the holidays when my brothers couldn't because they're in the military or whatever. I'm done. They want to come up and see me. They can come up and see me, but I'm staying home. And I was apologetic about that for the first couple of years, but I don't apologize for that anymore. I love it. I love it. It's what I want. It's, it's what the holidays are to me. A time to relax and be with, with the people that I want to be with the most. And that's my husband, whom I only get to see two days a week. Maybe. I don't think it's asking too much. So, what do you guys do for the holidays? Maybe I'll open a thread on Ravelry and actually update <laughs> the Rav group about my this episode being posted, which I'm really bad about. You guys can tell me. If, if you want to, if you don't want to talk about it, don't talk about it. I get it. It's a stressful time. So, that's dye pods. Uh, processes. I do have a process to show you. I haven't actually attempted it yet, though, so I'm going to wait till next week. Um, my husband and I, this weekend, gosh, she's a good sport. I drew up a quick little sketch on a post-it note and said, can you make me this? And he looks at me and goes, what is it? I said, it's a warping board. I'm going to make self-striping yarn. And he says, well, can you find me some plans online or something? I said, there aren't any. I made it up. <laughs> and he just laughed and said, okay. God bless him. We went in the garage. We took a big square of chipboard. And he's like, well, how big do you want? And I'm like, I don't know. I just want this, this, and this. You figure it out. <laughs> and so we did some calculations and figured it out. And it looks like it's going to work great as a... I do have this big elaborate warping board made out of PVC pipe that I want at some point, but right now it's a very basic plywood with dowels in it structure. And if I can get it to go, I, I get it, I don't have any yarn. I can't even test it because I'm completely out of yarn. Uh, I'm going to test it and then we'll see how it goes. We'll see if it works. I will absolutely show you what it is. Uh, I I want to share that with you. So. Fingers crossed that it works. Processes growth. Somebody bought a button. I have buttons in the shop now. I told you last week that I would, and I do. Here's the button. It says Highland Handmaids. Enable, or sorry, it says enable your addiction, Highland Handmaids. And it's got some poetic fiber in there in the back. That's what that's what it is. I think it's poetic. So uh, you can buy the buttons in the shop for a dollar with your order if you want, or just plain by itself if you want, and I'll mail that out to you. Um, it's a square button. It's a little bit different. That's that's about it. And, and that really isn't even this week. It, it's last week's growth. But somebody actually bought one, and I was pretty. I was, I was enjoying that. It, it made me happy. So um, other things for growth. A new, a new yarn shop has just opened up in the mountains, uh, about 25 minutes from my house, which is just a couple towns over. It would be m more local by about 50% than the next closest yarn store. So it's close by my standards. Um, I haven't been there yet. I hope to go there on Friday. A friend of mine... Um, from that town just just messaged me about it so I'm gonna talk to them and see maybe if they want to carry my yarn it is very local you can't get much more local than two towns over so we'll see how it goes um, I'll update you about that as I get more information that's growth grabby hands grabby hands this week um, is a new podcast that I just started listening to I'm slowly branching out to other podcasts. I, I'm very cautious about how many podcasts I watch or listen to because I get overwhelmed really easy and that actually adds stress to my life. Like I get really stressed out if I can't watch everything in sequential order. And when you're four episodes behind, it's really hard to, to stay in sequential order. Um, especially because when I get a new podcast that has been out there for a while, I want to go back and listen to all the episodes in order. I have OCD that way. Like I just can't help it. So, um, Somebody had plurked about this podcast. It's a video podcast. And I was kind of like, mm. all right, I'll go try it. I love her. 
Uh, the podcast is Student Knits. Uh, I forget the girl's name now. She's Student Knits on Plurk, which is how I identify her. Uh, Student Knits is in England, in Cornwall, I believe, and she has this delightful British accent. And she's a college student, and she knits, and she's a sophisticated knitter. Like She's doing an Erin um, uh, Fair Isle sweater. She calls it a jumper. It's cute. Um, she's she's done some some really impressive stuff and, and is working on some impressive stuff and she does other crafts as well like I just watched her second episode and she's doing beading uh, and some other other crafts she's just delightful to listen to it's very entertaining for me um, I will definitely be watching future episodes i have just got to add her to the Fiberista Files blog so that I can remember to check her uh, podcast out I do always try to go to the people's, the podcasters' blogs to watch the episodes for a couple of reasons. Number one, the show notes are right there so I can click on anything that's tempting. And number two, if you watch podcasts on iTunes, blip, it's not a blip player, so you, podcasters don't receive their revenue from those views. I get a teeny tiny amount of money for everybody who views my episodes via the blip player. So if they view it on my blog, if they view it in their Google Reader, if they view it anywhere other than iTunes. About 80% of you folks that watch me watch me through iTunes, which is fine. I totally understand the ease and convenience of iTunes. But it's just something to think about. If you don't mind going to the blog to watch, watch from the blog. Uh, you don't have to download anything that way. Sometimes it takes a while for the episode to load, but I usually hit play and then let it go a couple seconds and hit pause and then let the episode finish loading so that there's no um, fits and starts and stops uh, because I, I believe in supporting the podcasts that I enjoy. I can't donate, but I can watch it so that they make a little bit of money. So, Student Knits. Uh, her website, her blog, her show notes, all that is, let me check because I want to make sure I say this right because God only knows when I'm going to get show notes done. It is www.studentknits.blogspot.com. So S T U D E N T K N I T S, studentknits.blogspot.com. And she has two episodes up now, and you should check her out. So that's all I've got this week, guys. Uh, oh, her name's Claire, by the way. I don't know why that escaped me. That's all I have this week, folks. Um, how many minutes am I in here? Let me check. I'm sorry I keep looking off screen. My laptop's over here and you're over here. It's about 33 minutes. That's not so bad for an episode, especially one as light on knitting content as mine has been lately. Uh... I get my fiber order on the 21st, so it will probably, that's when this update's going to go live. It's going to be at least two weeks before I do another update, so catch the 21st update if you want. As always, if there's a colorway that you're waiting for you'd like to see again and you haven't seen it in a while, drop me a line. There goes my heater. Uh, and I will see what I can do about creating a custom colorway for you. It may be a little while. I'm almost caught up, though. I'm, I'm pretty much caught up on custom orders, so... Uh, if you're waiting for something from me, let me know. Uh, I guess then, until next week, happy spinning and knitting, and thanks for tuning in.